Hello, welcome to the literary and jury charge portion of the 60 class. We're going to start out with some jury charge. Okay, ready? Members of the jury, you have patiently listened to 12 days of eloquent albeit sometimes vague testimony in the case at hand. You are admonished to ignore the occasional portions of testimony which were stricken from the record as well as the emotion displayed by both counsel in the course of their respective summations. You are reminded as jurors, that it is your duty to weigh the valid testimony here presented and to determine from this evidence your collective judgment as to the relative values of the cases presented by plaintiffs and defendants. You must decide first whether or not in your estimation defendants were, in fact, guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of culpable negligence in this suit, and secondly, the fair and reasonable amounts to be set as settlement for such injuries as were set forth in this case. You are further cautioned that the physical appearance or attire of various parties in this case are irrelevant to the causes pending before this court. We are dealing with what should be a relatively simple civil suit. We will recess at this time so that you may begin your deliberations. Should you require any portion of the transcript of the proceedings for clarification or review, the bailiff will provide that for you. Okay. I have some literary for you. I will read this at 60. Ready? Welcome, my friends. Thank you 
for coming today. I am pleased to have this chance to tell you why I am running for the office of Mayor of Carterville. As you realize, I have never held public office. Why should I decide to become a candidate in this race? I will tell you why. For the past 12 years, we have had a parade of politicians filling or filing through our city hall. Men with extensive political backgrounds who convinced us that we needed them to head our local government. They have sold us a political bill of goods. Once elected, all of them, without exception, have been more concerned with personal gain than with the betterment of our city. Major proposals for civic projects have been delayed because of our mayor and the city council members. Okay. My next article here is on the minimum wage law. Okay, here we go. The Fair Labor Standards Act specifies a minimum wage for all employers who are engaged in interstate commerce. The minimum wage is adjusted periodically to reflect the change in the spending power of the dollar. The Act also sets guidelines for the standard work week of 40 hours. The customary compensation is or for overtime is time and a half for any hours over the standard. The Act must also establish the minimum age for employees depending on the state the minimum age is between 15 and 16 years old with special provisions to provide higher minimums for anyone engaged in dangerous or high-risk occupations. 
in addition to guidelines established by the Fair Labor Standards Act, most states have established fair employment practice laws of their own. These laws help to prevent discrimination that is based on race, color, sex, or religion. Okay. My next article is called Proprietorship. Okay. I'm going to give you a sh short word list before I read the material. So go ahead and write those so you, you are familiar with the words. Ready? We have Coopers, Capital, Plumbers, Clarks, Clerk, Scholar, Debt, Small Scale, Entitled, American, Capital, Carpenters, Rights, and Proprietorship. Okay, all right. I will read this at 60. Ready? A sole proprietorship is the name applied to a business that is owned and operated by a single person. The sole proprietorship is the oldest form of business organization dating back to carpenters, millers, smiths, wrights, coopers, plumbers, and clerks, which a clerk is a clerk or scholar. The proprietor furnishes all the capital for the business. He must assume all the risks and all the losses. He must pay all the debts and be responsible for all the decision making. The proprietor is entitled to receive all the profits of the business and he also holds title to all the business assets. A sole proprietorship is well suited to a small scale business. In fact, the vast majority of American businesses are proprietorships. Okay. I've got an article for you. It is called The Tasmanian Devils. And if you weren't, if you didn't know now, there are such things as Tasmanian devils. All right, here we go. Ready? <clears throat> Strolling through an Australian bushland park one afternoon, I noticed a pair of dark eyes glaring at me 
from the shade of a gum tree. A black animal the size of a short-legged bull terrier stands against a wire fence. It looks like pieces of other creatures, all stitched together. The front legs and sharp clawed paws are similar to a dog's. The ears remind me of a bat's, pink and almost hairless. The whiskers are long and luxuriant, like a cat's. As I return, its gaze, the animal opens prominent jaws to reveal wicked curving canines. Then it makes a low throaty growl before running away in a peculiar rocking Horse motion. I pull back as a strong stench comes toward me. Nearly overcome, I check the sign on the fence. Tasmanian Devil. This encounter at the Heelsville sanctuary 40 miles east of Melbourne is my first meeting with the world's largest meat-eating animal found only in Tasmania, an island 150 miles south of the Australian mainland. The Tasmanian devil has one of the most unsavory reputations in the animal kingdom. A champion eater, the devil punctuates bloody squabbles over its daily feed of prey with the piercing screams and howls that gave it its satanic name. Given half a chance, the creature will even eat others of its own kind and its own young. Their table manners are not what you'd find at the Ritz Hotel, says John Hamilton, director of the Tasmanian Devil Park Wildlife Rescue Center at Port Arthur. To Americans, the Tasmanian devil's beastly ways come as no surprise, thanks to Hollywood. When Warner Brothers animators were looking for a fresh new cartoon, for Bugs Bunny, one of them suggested something he'd seen in a crossword puzzle. Tasmanian Devil Taz, a yowling, drooling tornado.
on legs has since become a hit with audiences worldwide. Real life devils can be found in nearly 20 zoos and wildlife parks in Australia and two overseas. But people or few people get to see the animal in the wild. Okay, that concludes our jury charge in literary for the 60 class. Have a great day.